had a custom guitar maker. You, we had a custom guitar maker on the show five times, only so because you had this ulterior agenda. You had this motive that all, all you wanted was to get a customized live guitar, and you made it happen. That is very true. And it was signed, I believe. That is true, and then I had the whole yeah. band but signed. That, but yeah. that's why we had this guy on in, in his business on the show. <laughs> it was worth it for me. And Chad Taylor. For you, exactly. Chad Taylor, there's a reason why Chad Taylor is on the phone and not in person because <laughs> – Mr. Yeah. Taylor, you don't want to be anywhere near this nut. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not true. That's that an absolute before. fact. Anyway, joining with on the line right now, uh, a band, uh, as I just mentioned, 8 million copies sold just from one album. That would be Throwing Copper. Uh, they've been around a long time. Extremely successful band is, as I mentioned, my favorite band since I was in elementary school. I'm old now. I'm 40 years old. Uh, Chad Taylor is the lead guitar player for the band Live, and he joins us right now on the line. Chad, thanks for coming on, my man. How are you doing? Hey, guys. It's good to be here. Uh, this is the very first dinner view i've done since quarantining myself i don't know how many months ago now two months ago so uh it's nice to uh actually reach out and talk to some people i appreciate you coming on chad yeah, i mean lot, chad. you know we had uh we, we've had a couple of musicians on our show uh uh dave perner from soul asylum came on our show last week i know you guys uh, toured together before um and, and i talked to him about how he's holding up during this whole coronavirus thing i mean what is this like for you i mean you're not able to really go out and do any shows or really do much of anything i mean how are, how are you holding up during this whole thing you and your family well of course the public facing side of my life is as a musician but you know i'm a serial entrepreneur and uh, i've invested in dozens of businesses and created hundreds of jobs and so uh it was pretty easy to shut down the musician side because shows got uh, postponed or, or canceled and moved, rescheduled. But on the entrepreneurial side, um, I spent weeks and weeks working with my entrepreneurial partners uh, through uh, small business loan, uh, through the small business loan process, uh, working with, you know, local banks, et cetera to try and ensure that as many of our employees could stay on as humanly possible. In between my wife and I, we, we employ 168 people. And wow. uh, about initially we had to furlough or lay off about 148 employees, of, of which oh now we've been able to, you know, week by week as things are turning back on and, and we've made adjustments to be able to start to bring them back on. And, of course, on the band side and the musician side, I've got, you know, uh, the, the whole administration side of the band, which is, you know, managers, lawyers, agents that have all been impacted all the way down to the guys that are really uh, part of the unseen magic of a show, which is, you know, your road crew. Uh, and, and that staff is pretty far and wide. That's everything, again, from the leadership side, like tour management, production managers, all the way down through, you know, the guys that drive the tour buses and the trucks, all these men and women who get lumped together and called crew members are out of jobs. And it's not like just because live's not touring that they can go find other income, you know, with other bands. This is being, uh, you know, in some way, shape or form, fiscally catastrophic to the independent gig workers that are really the backbone of the music industry, the touring music industry. And I happen to live in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which is only 20 minutes south of Lidditch, Pennsylvania, which is the epicenter of touring production. It's the world's largest uh, touring production um, companies and lo world's largest touring production facility. And so that whole, like the whole community in town has been rocked by that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's pretty devastating. And, and, you know, hey, forgive me, you know, for being kind of music centric there for a minute. I know that this has impacted everyone's lives across the board i was just you know i think it's important to share you know the the part that i actually no really sure do well, there's no question Absolutely. and i'm and i'm sorry that uh, you've had to lay off that many people and there's so many people struggling you make a very good point it's not just the band that's not able to tour it's right. all the people it, that are surrounded around the band it's the entire uh, production yeah, it's, it's a very good point you brought up there chad i want to talk to you a little bit about you mentioned you, you still live in pennsylvania this band is from york pennsylvania talk to me a little bit about all the local businesses surround you and where you grew up See, you know, we, a lot of people want to talk about the big businesses. I think they'll be just fine. It's those small businesses, those restaurants, and, and you know, uh, where you grew up that I'm really concerned about. Can you talk a little bit about that and those people that you grew up with in York, Pennsylvania, that I would imagine are struggling right now? So, you know, the history of live is a unique one. We, we certainly were formed by our experience of growing up 
in York and coming together for people that don't know our band formed at the age of 13. And I don't know, we experienced some sort of early success probably about the time of, I don't know, 18, 19 years old, something like that, with the release of Mental Jewelry. And then M- MTV and Radio Play followed that. So <laughs> we sort of got sucked out of York and put into, you know, tour buses, airplanes, et cetera, for really the early stage of our uh, adulthood or early adulthood. And then, uh, you know, when, in 2008, when our band went on hiatus, I sort of had to look at myself in the mirror and say, well, you know, what am I going to be about? And one of the things that had occurred to me was that uh, I was my entrepreneurial spirit was just, um, you know, crying out. It was something that was always there, but I left it sort of dormant as the band worked, focused on the band. And I decided strategically to return to York and to bring a lot of the companies that I'd started to build back into York, Pennsylvania. And one of the things it did, of course, was, you know, you, you drop the guard and uh, I'll just say the, uh, the tendencies to, to do anything as a musician, you know, in terms of your public persona profile, everything, you got to become real humble. I opened up access to all the local business leaders in town, became friends with uh, the civic leadership, and then, so, you know, that meant interacting with the municipal government and then even our state government, trying to figure out how to create jobs in this small town. So your question about oh. how are these yeah. businesses doing, like Harley Davidson's in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's w- one of their major manufacturing facility facilities, and they employ thousands of people. And honestly, I think Harley Davidson's going to be fine. <laughs> the people that I've been yeah. really concerned about are the small business owners. Uh, sure. You know, uh, you know, I'm talking about shop owners where right. the right, owner right. operators turn up every day to work and to run the company. Their cash reserves are never great to begin with, and then you're talking about you know turning the key off for months at a time. Uh, you know, it's it can it, it can be disastrous. Uh, my advice to my own. Uh, you know, for anybody that's listening, my advice to my peer group and people where I've invested my own dollars was step one, which is, you know, keep your war chest large, which means hold on to all the cash that you possibly can. So, uh, you know, businesses and business owners that have access to credit or credit facilities, I recommend, you know, calling the bank, seeing if you can increase that credit facility to holding on to the cash that you do have. And, you know, coming up with a strategic plan that's realistic, looking at, you know, several months of no income operations. And we've had to do that across the board, um, you know, with about a dozen operating companies, entities. And I will say it, it, the, that the banks have been um, and the Small Business Administration have been extremely helpful. Uh, we dealt with... Uh, you know, probably realistically five different bank entities. And in each case, some were large multi, you know, state banks and some were the smaller entities. In each case, we wound up interfacing with some caring person, uh, you know, that also was dealing with family struggles, et cetera. And then I happened to have some direct connectivity with the SBA. And I know that those people were, you know, literally, uh, I got a phone call and this didn't have anything to do with me trust me being in the mem- in the band live i got a phone call on uh easter weekend on a saturday with a guy trying there was some you know a uh, problem on an application some number didn't match with another number and they wanted to get to the bottom of it because they were processing loans literally on a saturday so wow you know i did really see the business community pull together i'm deeply deeply concerned for businesses uh that rely on uh large public gatherings like restaurants. Uh, my wife yeah. is an entrepreneur and owns several yoga studios. I'm concerned about how she goes back to work. One, for her safety, for safety of the students, but also economically speaking, a lot of these places can't survive and thrive without real numbers. And so right. we've got a big conundrum. So I, I wanted to ask you, for just from a musical perspective now, I mean, do you have any sense? I mean, we all are guessing here, right, Chad? But do you have any sense of when we'll even be able to see a, a live concert again, a sporting event? I know you're a NASCAR fan. I mean, do you have any sense of when 
you know, forget about when you're going to tour or, or that. When will we actually be able to gather in thousands of people to, to watch live music again? Yeah. Yeah. It's, so my, my racing love is IndyCar and I also watch stadium super trucks. But what's interesting is so what they're, what the science is saying is that we won't be able to have large mass gatherings until 70% of the population has either received a vaccine or earned herd immunity. Herd immunity. Yeah. So, look, guys, this is uh, it's a sketchy time. They're saying best right now, best case scenario, fall of 2021 to get back wow. to any sort of type of normal touring, normal shows. Will that be the so, longest amount of time that you haven't done a live show? I mean, because because you you've been touring pretty much your whole life. I mean, you guys take breaks. I understand that, but I mean, it, will this be the longest break for you since you were like a teenager? You know, it it may be. I don't know. You know, live was always one of those interesting bands. When we really took off, we really took off. I don't know. There might have been some stretches in our lives where we had a year, year and a half away from playing shows. That doesn't mean that we didn't play, you know, privately or or, or together like that. But we we've been a band that when we go away, we have a tendency to really disappear. Uh, so I don't know. I'd have to look back in our history. I will say this is a pretty long time. For live, currently we have we have shows booked in November in South Africa. And shows oh, wow. booked in Australia in March, and so those shows so far have not moved, and uh, you know no one's asked for their uh, money back, et cetera. You know, like you know, we're not seeing mass cancellations of tickets or anything like that. So depending on what happens with two variables, there you're talking about. First of all, two completely separate foreign entities in Australia and in in, in South Africa, uh, and then the addition of international flight will we be allowed to fly there and quite frankly there's no human being alive right now that can give us the answer to that yeah have you heard anything as far as the difference between an outdoor event and a live event Uh, have you heard that maybe that outdoor events might be more accepted at before 2021 as opposed to something live indoors um well okay so I think we just saw where is it Missouri started to just allow concerts. Yep, saw uh, that. They, they said an indoor venue that holds a thousand people could do fifty percent capacity, five hundred capacity, and I don't know if they, they declared outdoor capacity, but they're talking about keeping this you know six foot apart distance. I just know that while I appreciate the safety standards of that, that doesn't work economically for promoters. Right. So the, the question is, you know, is any promoter going to go out and try and put on a large scale show? Um, it, you know, uh, I mean, obviously we have to think about public safety, but then there's the whole economic side of this thing. Uh, will the bands and artists show up and perform for less dollars? Because obviously less people in a room means less dollars. Right. But, and, and then the next question is, will people come? Anyway, will people feel good about coming? Of course, if you ask me, it's like, look, I'm a I'm a diehard musician. I want to get on that stage and play. If you put people in a room, uh, you know, all health aspects aside, I got to be honest with you, I'll be on the stage. I'm not that, you know, me, uh, my blinders on. I actually, okay, these are things that I said jokingly to Ed, our singer. I said, one, I propose a new look for the band, which are black hazmat suits. (laughs) <laughs> okay and then, and then the That's... next thing i said was you know it's time for the concert for herd immunity right <laughs> <laughs> Which, that's that's funny know, i i, I actually i i love that <laughs> i'm, I'm like a, a disclaimer coming in of course that say that you <laughs> never see another concert again right right <laughs> I'd be saying, wait, is this my favorite band since I was 12 years old? Or are these guys nutcases? What well, happened to these guys? <laughs> now, you, you couldn't let anyone who was susceptible or who was a high-risk group attend, obviously. Yeah. Right, of course. And yeah. now, would, would, would you have PPE or would, would you have masks or would, would masks not be allowed in those circumstances? Yeah, I don't I don't know how that looks, but I'll definitely be in my hazmat suit. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, I will enjoy seeing that with you wearing your, your red uh, sunglasses like back in the day. So, Chad, uh, is this an opportunity for you to maybe even pick up your guitar in the conf- uh, guitars, whatever, in the confines of your own home. I mean, do you find yourself playing instruments more now or less? 
you know, I think that with mass scale events live, you know, we're we're not the youngest guys in the world now. I'm 49 years old. We we've lived through some uh, pretty scary things. You know, I can remember all the way back to the Oklahoma City bombing. Uh, of course, live the the song "Lightning Crashes" was what was out around that time. And then 9-11 happened, and the song Overcome was out and used around right. that time. And so we've lived through some of these things. And, for example, I definitely in those moments felt like I needed to pick up a guitar. I needed to play. I really felt moved to, to get to music. Weirdly enough, with uh, this pandemic, I have been, like, almost anti-music. Haven't touched the guitar. Wow. Uh, well, that's, there is one caveat to that, which is, my my daughter, uh, she'll do a little evening concert for my wife and I almost oh, every night. Cool. And my wife always jokes, how many songs will it take until dad says, okay, let me play the guitar. So, <laughs> okay. That's so, cool. <laughs> uh, that, I have played guitar for that. But, like, I haven't sat around and, like, written songs. I haven't had that feeling yet to get to music. But having said that, my life has always a weird ebb and flow that way. Like, at some point... I, right. You know, like a painter might put down the brushes and say, I don't have I'm not feeling inspired to, you know, to put paint on canvas. I'm not sure quite there yet. Maybe I'm just can I can, a, can I assume can I assume, Chad, that if you are picking up the guitar in your home with your family, the last thing you're going to play is a live song since you've played these songs tens of thousands of times in your life. Is that am I right? And uh, assuming that, that, that that's the last song you would probably play. Yeah, I don't listen to my <laughs> own records and I don't play my own songs. For sure. That makes sense. Sure. <laughs> that definitely, uh, that definitely makes fact, sense. We, you know, oftentimes, you know, where we do have long gaps where we haven't played as the band live, you know, with all four of us in a room. Right. Uh, we, one of the running jokes we have is, okay, what do we want to play, like, to warm up? And there's a common joke, which is, hey, anybody want to jam on Lightning Crashes? <laughs> uh, which, yeah. Does, just, do you ever get you, tired of playing those? I mean, do you seriously, like when you're in front of a crowd, I don't care how many, five, ten, twenty thousand people, do you do you ever get tired of playing the same songs over and over again since you know the, the early nineties? Okay, so that's the thing, that's the beauty about live music. So, so I'll I'll answer this question in, in two segments. One, the obvious answer is no. I never get tired of playing them. But one of the things that's happened because of this pandemic. We've seen a lot of musicians, you know, emerge online and doing some, you know, uh, intimate uh, performances um, and, you know, delivering music to their fans, et cetera. And I, I've just like everybody else, I've tuned in. I've watched some of that stuff. But for me, I have to have, like, I don't exist in that virtual world as far as a musician. I need something that's tangible and real. I have... Uh, you know, my analogy would be, um, uh, you know, that it's uh, that that a virtual world is its own experience, its own unique thing, but it's not the same thing. And right. so, for me, I like kind of more of like mentally, I put my brain on pause and said, I don't want to actually, I, I don't want that experience uh, of you know playing on I don't know Facebook Live or Instagram Live or something like that that what I really want to do is have a real audience in front of me. And if I need to stay kind of retired until that time is appropriate, well, then I'm good right. with that. So, on a, uh, yeah, that makes sense to me. So, so you feed off that real audience then? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because our band live is not named about live performance. It's, it's under the theory of staying present and being in the moment, more like live television or live radio. Right. It's, about, it's a spiritual mantra of, you know, staying here. And so one of the things I might offer to your listeners, because I know, you know, hey, man, my family and friends and the people around, uh, the pandemic has caused all sorts of anxiety. We've got financial anxiety. We've got the stress about, you know, what we're continually watching on the news. And then, of course, we have the stress worrying about the health and safety and well-being of our loved ones. And, you know, one of the things that we've been taught and that we know is that anxiety comes from projecting forward so you know just sure. remember my band's name and remember like look around yourself in the moment you know is the sky still above you you know right. is the moon out or the sun out or whatever energy you're into is that there 
You know, yeah. is everything, you know, are your loved ones safe? Are they okay in that moment? And if they are, right. then it usually will reduce the anxiety levels. Um, and I, I think that's a, just like a really important thing to remind people, like stay present, stay in the moment, don't project forward. You know, like, hey, did you eat today? I know you may be worried about your paycheck a month from now, but currently are you sustaining yourself? Are you okay? And, mm-hmm. of course, if you're not, then the other trick with that is don't let things fester. That's my right. one other big advice is, uh, I, you know, for example, I have a lot of friends and family that depend on me. And what I keep on saying is uh, if you, even if you have a financial problem, whatever it is, let's talk about it early. Let's address the stressor sooner than later because what happens is as you let things compound it is so much harder to overcome uh, you know so for example you've got somebody that's short two hundred dollars it's easy to find the two hundred dollars but when you let the two hundred dollars go by by 10 months and it's two grand yeah. it's probably much harder to find two thousand than it was two hundred no, so well you know said. deal yeah. deal with the problems early and uh you know sure you know, the, the other thing, too, is, you know, the human race has been through so much craziness, and uh, we always find a way to survive and thrive, especially in the country that is America. I mean, no we, doubt. We, that's, yep. that's not a slogan. It's just the truth. We're the most innovative yep. people on earth. Well, Chad, I have to say, you're not just an, an, an amazing guitarist, but you should be a life coach. I, I got to be honest with you, man. Chad, is it weird on a lighter note? On a lighter there note, there is more to Chad Taylor than music. <laughs> That's right. I, on a lighter note, Chad, is it weird for you? Like there are middle-aged men like myself that have posters of you on my wall. Is that is that weird for you? Um, you know, I had this whole <laughs> fantasy as a young boy, like when I got my first guitar, and I was like, you know, one day I will achieve rock stardom. And I'm going to be honest with you. In that picture of that dream, middle-aged men looking at my poster on a wall was not <laughs> one of the dreams. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, understandable. But uh, I appreciate your candor, Chad. As you know, Chad, always been a, a huge fan of you guys and what you do and uh, always get a chance to see you when I have the time to do so. And uh, uh, best of wishes to you and your family. And good luck with your wife with, with her yoga uh, uh, because I, we, really, we really hope that uh, she's able to continue to do what she does. And uh, appreciate you coming on, my man, as always. Always appreciate it. And uh, stay safe out there and look forward to seeing you guys again soon sometime down the road when it's safe. It's always great, guys. It's always awesome. Thanks for having me on. I wish everyone health and safety out there. Take care. Appreciate take care of yourselves. And I guarantee you we'll be back on stage before you know it playing playing some tunes. I hope so. I'm keeping, my, I'm keeping that poster on my wall, though, Chad, whether you like it or not, okay? That's a good thing. I don't see it as a bad and, thing. and the rug, the throw rug. That's right. I have a throwing copper rug up there on my wall, too. I'm obsessed. What can I say? Anyway, all seriousness, Chad, thanks again for your time, my man. Really do appreciate it. Stay safe. Right, thanks a lot, Much Chad. Enjoy it. and blessings. Bye. Thank you. All right, there you go. Uh, lead guitar player from uh, the band Live, my favorite band since I was uh, very young, uh, pre-puberty, by the way.